Alrighty, we're live here with Brandon Stahl, and he is a motion graphics designer at Zergnet, and we would love to hear from you about your career and your experiences. If, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, for sure. So, Brandon Stahl, um, I've been working in video for 20, maybe 20 years. Um, oddly enough, I started... Uh, with a graphic design degree. So I didn't have anything to do with video, motion, anything. I started out uh, in graphic design and um, over the time of uh, getting my degree and realizing uh, I have an opportunity to go overseas and work overseas um, and, and learning and, and realizing I really love video, um, uh, I came back and I uh, went to school to, uh, at Full Sail to to get more into and learn more about After Effects and, and motion graphics and really, really get into it because I realized around that time, that's what my passion was. That's really what I love to do. And um, figuring out what you love to do is, is, is awesome. It's a great thing. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, from there I went to school and, and just started to grind, started to try to find jobs in, in the industry, whatever I could, and which led me to where I am now. Um, so currently I am, I run a, the video department for Zergnet where the wing or the, the, the part of, the, of Zergnet that I run is called Static Media. So we, uh, we run uh, 12 YouTube channels. Wow. We produce between 100 and 120 videos a week. So um, most of it isn't motion graphics, but um, that is my background. I ran a company before coming to Zergnet where all I did was motion design and animation mostly explainer videos um, for companies usually ranging from 60 to 90 seconds. So that was my specialty before I came over to Zergnet. Um, but yeah, currently uh, I'm running a team and uh, I got have a handful of video editors, some animators, uh, and we just crank out lots and lots of content, um, whether it's animation, whether it's uh, kind of listicle about movies, entertainment, all sorts of stuff. So. So yeah, that's where I'm at right now. Um, really, really like working in the industry. There's a lot of opportunities and there's continuing opportunities growing in the industry and especially with uh, motion graphics. That mm -hmm. is a big one that I don't think a lot of people um, really know that uh, motion graphics plays a part in, in a lot of areas within video, air quotes, video, whatever that mm -hmm. is. But, um, motion graphics plays such a large part in it, um, whether you're doing full, explainer videos, whether you're doing intros, whether you're doing thir bottom thirds, upper thirds, outros, end cards, um, you know, name plates. There are so many things that if you have a good understanding and after effects that you can do. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of places that are looking for talent that are very comfortable working in after effects. And um, there's just not a lot of talent out there. There's not a lot of people out there that, that work in it. So there's a, there's a lot of opportunities that that people don't know about. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, I was, a really good thing to um, run into here was um, you were talking about explainer videos there for a second. Would you like to tell everyone like kind of like what is involved in those so they have a better understanding of like what maybe an explainer video yeah, is? Yeah, so um, explainer videos are really, it's a short 60 to 90 second. You don't want to get too long. A video that talks about somebody's service a platform, a piece of software, but it's a way to sell a product, sell a service, sell a platform in a very short amount of time. So you, you create graphics, you have a voiceover, you have a, you know, music, sound effects, everything. And you build a short video mm -hmm. that highlights somebody's product that they can, then they can go out and market. Um, so instead of standing up and someone giving a, a 30 minute PowerPoint presentation, um, or having, you know, cause you can't, it's hard to give a PowerPoint presentation very quickly all over, you know, all over the country, but it's uh -huh. not difficult to create explainer video that, that, that someone can utilize to send out and say, you know, this is our, this is our product service in a nutshell. Um, you know, this, these are, the, this is why this is the problem that there is. This is the problem that we're addressing. This is how we're solving it. And this is how we're solving it better than anyone else. It's a really great tool. Um, mm -hmm. And so I specialized in that. I made a whole bunch of them over the over the course of about four years. 
Yeah, I can definitely see how that would be like something a lot of companies would need because I know that some, you know, like some, some, you know what a company like makes, but you don't really know like how they make it or like, like right. what they're about. And so that's definitely, I think, a interesting thing to think about for like any new artists out there. Like if they want to co- explore a company, I think that might be a cool like personal project is to yeah, like, I, make something. Yeah, it's a great personal project. If you have, you know, in the tech industry, you got all these tech companies coming out with these apps and coming out with all these cool new online services they all need this. They all need these. And so that, that honestly, that'd be a great project to go out and find a, a company that has kind of a unique app platform or unique tool or service and, and figure out how you can kind of get the information off their website and build a cool little explainer video about their product, um, whether, whether they ever see it or not. I mean, it's, mm-hmm. it's a great way to learn that process and, and kind of grow your skill set. Yeah, yeah, I um, I actually do know like there, there there are some small brands that I actually do personally know that that might be like a good person just for myself like just as I'm an I'm an animator so just so everyone knows I'm Jason I don't know if I introduced myself but I've been on here a couple times but um I love animation I'm just like I'm gonna get super nerded out in this conversation I'm letting everybody know because I'm excited I love talking about animation so yeah um, I mean it's it's storytelling to be honest it's storytelling you're you're telling us, you know, you're telling somebody's story. It's a product, it's a service, and you, and, you, and how well can you do it in 60 to 90 seconds? Um, but it's fun. I really enjoy it. It's a challenge, but um, it's a lot of fun. Um, so before, I know you said you wanted to get into work. So I um, did you want to t- hop right into that, or did you want to chat a little bit? Or yeah, I mean, I, I can go ahead. What I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to take a couple things that I did, um, short little pieces of some videos that I made, and I'm going to try to recreate it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll start from the beginning. I'm actually not going to make anything in Illustrator, but I'll kind of show you my process uh, and how I go from the most important part, which is the script, hands down. Mm-hmm. The most important thing in your project is the script because um, that's going to lay out everything. So yeah, let me go ahead and share my screen and I can walk. I can kind of uh, get into a little bit of that process. Let me know when you, oh, let's see, desktop, share. Oh, now I got a system preferences, of course. Oh, you got to be kidding me. To recall record later. Let me see. All right. All righty. Can you see my screen? Yep, yep. You can see it? Yep, we can. Cool. All right. All right. This is awesome. All right. So. So what I do is um, I have a script and I start off with a script and this is ba- this is basically I've taken the script and I've, I've broken it out into pieces and each one of these are individual boards. Each one of these are scenes within the video. Um, so if I zoom in, you're going to see I, I have the, the beginning of the script below the board and it, this allows me to kind of look at what the what the voiceover is talking about, what the script is talking about, and and then I just go through and I illustrate each section. Um, it allows me to visually pair up uh, what 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 the script is, and also kind of create a flow and how I can go from one board to the next. Mm-hmm. So um, that's that's I mean, in a nutshell, I make everything in Illustrator for the most part. Um, I, my clients will approve the boards before I go into animation. But this gives me a way that I can look through and kind of see the progression, figure out how I'm going to go from one board to the next. And uh, and then I've already thought about how because I always think about when I'm making the boards, how how I'm going to illustrate uh, animate this. What's the motion going to be like? What's the movement going to be like? How am I going to get from one to the next? Um, But this is a good way to visually kind of set up your your video. Mm-hmm. Um, cause once this is approved and once you have this, it's, you take and you break them out into like, this is what I'm going to work on today. You break them out into separate boards. You've got like scene one, which is right here. This is scene one. And then this is scene two. And what I like to do, you'll notice I've got the major components and I break out the major components in layers in illustrator. Cause what that allows me to do is when I import this in illustrator, each one of these is going to be its own layer in illustrator mm-hmm. instead yes. of importing it all. And it's flat. I'm, I'm, I'm going to, sorry if I'm 
if I'm telling you stuff that you may already know, I'm just going to kind of go, go through the process. Um, but yeah, it makes it really easy when you import this into Illustrator because then you have all these layers. And uh, instead of having to break everything out or separate it, it's already, to, to, to some extent, already broken out in, in After Effects. Mm -hmm. So go to After Effects. Still got my screen? Yep, yep. All right, so once I break it all out and uh, import it into After Effects, let me go ahead and that down there. Um, Organization for me is really, really important uh, because I can get lost in these projects because there's so many layers. There's so many elements. So making sure I start my project off with somewhat of a of a, uh, a structure in After Effects is super important. Um, otherwise, I get lost and I waste so much time figuring out, well, where's this? Where's that? Mm -hmm. um, so I usually like if I have a palette, I'll make solids. And I'll put my palette at the top so it's very easy for me just to drag and drop a solid if I need it. Um, I also have a folder that is my that is the composition that I'm going to be rendering to, and, and sending out to the client. And then I also have scene comps so I can work in each one of my scenes. And then obviously pre comps, which are it kind of gets smaller and smaller as I go. Um, so I'm happy to answer any questions you guys have. Uh, sorry, I'm going to move pretty quick here just because I'd like you guys to see some of the stuff I do. Um, and if you have questions, I'm, I'm fine with stopping and trying to uh, trying to talk about something that I'm currently doing. So um, when I get a scene into After Effects, usually I'll go through and I'll figure out how do I want to animate it and what do I want to animate? What do I want to animate first? And so a lot of times I'll just pick something like, for instance, let's go with the lights. So you got the lights here and I know where they are in the scene. Um, Cause that's right. I designed them in illustrator to be in those, in those sections, but I want to animate them. Well, one tool that I use is called explode layers. This is not part of after effects, but what it does, it'll turn, it'll turn your, your illustrator layer into shape layers. In After Effects, it, really it speeds cool. up the process. And then on top of that, you can then break those apart. So what I just did, and I can get rid of these if I really want to, is I just broke apart each one of the pieces that I made in Illustrator into an individual shape layer. So what I can do then is I can say, OK, let me go ahead and bring that back. Um, I only technically need one of them, right? Because they're both the same. Yeah. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to delete this one. And then what I can do is I can just animate this guy. Now there's a hundred different ways to animate something. I'm just going to try to do it pretty simple. Um, like for instance, it's always important to know where your anchor point is. So I would just, let's start off with scale. Go ahead and let's bring it to zero. So now all of a sudden, okay, we got that opening up. And then the next piece is we've got this, this, uh, the shaft of the light pole. And it might be cool to have, as this comes up, that the, the shaft goes up. So it's very easy. Again, S for scale. And I'm going to turn this. I don't want to, I want just the vertical. So again, I'm going to make a keyframe. I'm going to come here and I'm going to, let's see, see the problem is what you want to do is you want to make sure your anchor point is in the right spot. So another tool that I use is called motion um, it allows me to very quickly adjust where the anchor point is so i can very quickly all of a sudden hit that button and now the anchor point's at the bottom so i can hit zero there and now that is so useful i didn't but it's backwards so sometimes i'll just go right click keyframe time reverse okay so now it's like all right I got those two pieces. Now I'm like, okay, let me go ahead and do the light real quick. Maybe cool. Let's just scale that up. Let's scale it from the center. So now we've got everything kind of animating it. Yeah, let's just let's just parent this. It might be nice just to have this parent. So let's just parent that. So now everything's moving correctly. Now we want to. What I like to do is another tool in motion that I use. This is more if, if you're going to buy one tool for After Effects, motion is the tool because what you can do 
is you can select your keyframes. And these little sliders are your easing. So, so you're very quickly can ease That's and you can adjust awesome. how much you want it to ease. Another thing you can do, you go ahead and undo that is you can create, you guys uh, overshoot. It's basically where, where the animation ends and it, it's kind of a natural slows down. Um, that's excite. So what you can do is you can click on that and it, it instantly gives you overshoot. Go ahead and just make it and but see it feels a little slow. So what's you can just start and I just start playing with I start playing with very quickly playing with how fast like the speed of how how fast I want it to, to animate. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the overshoot again you guys know effect your effects overshoot may be too much that's in your effects panel uh, let me go ahead and select it here's your overshoot so let's maybe drop the overshoot itself let's maybe drop it to eight let's keep the bounce at 40 and let's call the friction at eight or at 80. that is going to be i think a little bit more natural let me find this one. There it is. So you don't want everything. You don't want something to be too, too bouncy. It just doesn't feel natural. But it's with mo with movement. It's always nice to have a little natural movement at the end. Um, and then the next thing I do is I'll just play with the timing. So I want everything to kind of progress. So let's move this a little bit more. And it's all really, it comes down to, it comes down to personal preference, like, you know, like where you think it feels the best. I try to use as few keyframes as humanly possible. The more keyframes, the more crazy it gets. So there you go. Let's just go with that. So I've got my light pole. So there's the light pole. And I use a lot of pre-comps too. Pre-comps are important because you can do effects upon effects or animations without adjusting this stuff. So I would just select all this. Just gonna pre-comp it, Command Shift C. And let's call it light post pre. Okay. So now that's there. Go ahead and turn this other light post on. Cause again, that one's not animated, but this one is. So I just take this layer and I duplicate it, Command D. I can get rid of that light post. Now I've got two light posts. So allowing, you know, and then you can offset them if you want, but just cutting down as much time as you can is super important in After Effects. Being able to work efficiently and quick. So those are the light posts. And let's go to the Let's go to the, oh, let's get rid of that, I'm not gonna do that. The sign, uh, it's the same thing, it's the same thing. I'm going to select the sign and I'm gonna, I'm gonna and, uh, use explode layers to turn it into shapes and then I'm gonna break it apart. So now I've got it all broken apart, right? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna take it and sometimes if it's easier, pre-comp it now, so sign pre so now it's then you can just open up that pre-comp and now you're only working with those layers you don't have all these other layers you're trying to work with so now you can just work with these layers and if you're thinking okay i want to keep this pretty simple i don't want to animate all these work all these letters again what can you do you can pre-comp them indiana pre because maybe i just want I don't want to have to worry about animating all that stuff. I just want indie, but I want to be able to animate these two. And obviously this, I feel like opening up from the middle, right? Mm -hmm. Would make sense. So that's a position, P, position. They're where I want them to end. So let's go ahead and drag them to the center. So they're going to open up like that, right? And again, what am I going to do? I'm going to ease this stuff. So 
I'm going to go up here to motion. I'm going to select my out, my, my end keyframes and I'm going to add a little, so they, so it's more like they slide into place as opposed to just linear animations. Then I'm thinking, okay, I want, I want to, I want to have this stuff, uh, the Indiana and the gray box. I want it to, um, reveal itself. Well, the nice thing about now that it's a shape is I can duplicate it and I can scale it. And I don't know if you use a lot of, what? where are they? Where are my, Your alpha channels and stuff? No, where am I? Yeah, my, oh, the right, I'm blind. Woo-wee. That's good stuff right there. <laughs> so, we're going to put it into an alpha mat. So that is going to make, and once you get the, so that's going to, I mean, technically you don't need to reveal that, but then you can take this one and you can duplicate it, put it above Indiana, put Indiana in an alpha mat. If you really want, you know, you could then, you could scale those. There's, I mean, it's endless what you can do with the animation. Does all that make sense what I just did? Oh yeah. All the mats? Um, okay, so. Let me see, everybody in chat, did that make sense? Do we have any questions? Um, yeah, I mean, if most of that was pretty straight, I mean, I know After Effects, so that was super straightforward for me. Okay. Um, but um, Miranda again, said she's good. I, with After Effects, there are a lot of really complicated things you can do in After Effects. Um, but I've, I've come to learn that if you can keep it simple, you can keep things simple, and yet you can still make them look really, really good. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and pre-comp the car. I'm gonna go ahead, break it up. Oh, this one's not gonna be happy. I think this one's a lot of layers. Oh, not bad. Not bad. <laughs> oh, that's not bad. The thing is really at the end of the day, um, I only really want the tires. Uh, let's see. We got these three. So we're gonna go. We're gonna go ahead and uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and pre-comp that back tire. Let's go ahead and rotate. And let's just make it look like it's got a little wobble to it. Technically, let's go ahead and undo all. Now, this is another tool you can use. You can use spin. But, I mean, there's so many different things you can use to make stuff, to make stuff animate. Mm -hmm. I actually used turbulent displace once on like a 1% setting and for like a turning wheel once. Which is kind sure. Of interesting. So it's really just a, a matter of how much you want to do that. kind. Of, but what you let me go ahead. Uh, let's see, so let's go ahead and comp the rest of the truck, the car. So there's that. So let's go ahead and just pre comp all this stuff real quick. Are all right. So then, position a window. I'm gonna go ahead and just real quick do that thing. Wiggler. So let's go ahead and make another keyframe and smooth frequency. Okay. Uh, 
uh, all dependent. I don't know. Let's try magnitude. Try that. Let's just do it. Why? That should be good enough. And then here. And if you really want, you know, you can, I'm just going to take these off. It's going to take too much time. I don't have tons of time to do this, but normally I would make the smoke puff out. Um, I would make the, the, uh, shine on the, on the windows, the reflection on the windows move with it, but we really don't have time for that. Mm -hmm. So scene one, but at the end of the day, this really just comes down to your illustrator and so like for instance your bat your your road same thing we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make whoopsie there we are and offset it or we're going to well this has been a while I did have one question. Um, sure, yeah, go so ahead. So the person, so like you would be the one setting all this up or would someone set this up and then you animate it or is it all just like... Uh, both. 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 So I, I've i done both. Um, so because I have a graph design background, you know, I can, I can do this stuff. Um, but also uh, I've worked with clients who... You know, they, they, they have designers on staff mm -hmm. and they want to design the boards and they give me the boards. Okay. And then I will just take their, their boards and I will, I'll illustrate them. So it really depends on sometimes you're going to have clients who want to provide you with the script. Sometimes you're going to have clients who want to provide you with nothing. Sometimes you're going to have clients that provide you with everything and you're going to animate it. it really just depends. Um, but being able to kind of work in, in all the areas makes it to where you're not, you're, you're not pigeonholing yourself and they're like, well, I can only, I can only, I can only do this or I can only do that. Mm -hmm. um, if you can do it all, it doesn't matter what your clients need. Um, let's go ahead and pre-comp the background. Go ahead and just change it so I can see it better. Okay. That was a weird aspect ratio. Yeah, it was it was locked, so um all right, don't need you. So I've got these two. Let's go ahead and break them apart. It's just that's such I've used that so many times. And it, it, it is so nice to be able to break stuff apart. Um, so you could there's lots of different ways to animate this. Let's just uh, let's go ahead and create a shape. Yeah, this tool will definitely I think it will change my workflow because I don't like working in Illustrator a lot because I you have to break everything apart and have all the separate shape layers and stuff like that. I would just prefer to do it in you know an after effects. But this like But this but the nice it. thing about Illustrator let's see. The nice thing about Illustrator, it's it's much easier to anim or to illustrate uh where am I? There it is. It's much easier to animate in Illustrator or illustrate in Illustrator than it is in After Effects. Oh yeah. Yeah, um, it's more it's way more versatile. And so um, I would highly recommend if you want to if you want to get into doing stuff like this, you're going to have to learn how to you're going to want it, you're going to have to learn how to work in Illustrator because a lot of times your cl your clients will definitely um want you to work in illustrator mm -hmm. well i really like the the you can change the stroke styles and stuff like that in illustrator that's one of the things i really like about illustrator and as far as i know there's not a function like that in after effects so to change the stroke style yeah Le what do you mean like you know how you can change like in uh let's say you may, like, wanted to do like watermelon lines or something like there's like a you could change like you make a custom stroke for like you know like and change the points and stuff like that 
I don't know if that makes a lot of sense, but like they have like uh, I'm not sure for like I mean, you know, there's so many ways to do everything in After Effects. Uh, um, a that... good ex- a good example is like if you like draw a perfect circle, you know, and then you change the stroke style to like it having like thinner points, you know, it'll make a hole in the circle stroke, something like that. Okay, I think I know what you're saying. So you know, it's just like okay, that that works. Let's go ahead, close you. Close you. Let's go drop you back here. So then we're going to go ahead and background scene. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to take this. We want to, we don't, we want it to just show in that. Oh, that sign. See, and then you start realizing wait a second. Things just don't feel like that sign just opens up way too slow. So, uh, it's nice because you can just come in here and drag your keyframes, drag this down a little bit. Because what you want to do, you want to, whoops, wrong one. You want to be able to start, you want to stagger your animations too. You don't want everything to happen at the same time. Maybe take your lights, bring these down. And then have you ever, I'm sure you have. Another tool that I use for so useful is, uh, where's my road? Road line is trim paths. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, like I mean, I use, it is such a, it's, it's such a useful tool just because you can use it. I've used it before to write out letters because you can take a stroke and you can outline letters and then you can use trim pass to write out the letters and use that as a, as an alpha mat on the letters so mm-hmm. it looks like you're writing the letters out when you're actually just when you're not mm-hmm. um it's also after effects is fun to try to figure out how you can fake stuff to make it look you know because again print my, my belief is print is harder than motion because you can hide stuff in motion this, you know you can make something faster you can make it pop out and hide behind something there's just so many things you can do in in motion where whereas print print is what it is so you can't really hide anything with print design. Mm-hmm. I think I'm missing something here. There it is. Yeah, I remember one of our conversations we had. We were talking about how, like, when it becomes like being a graphic designer, it's like perfect, you know, in in animation. Like you can always hide something behind something else, or you can make. I mean, I what I like is I like taking my animations when I'm working on them and pushing them to the point, you know, like it's exaggerated or something like that. That's like one of my favorite things about animating is exaggerating stuff so i am um, i definitely understand like the whole um because graphic design is hard it's very hard and um it's got to be perfect you know yep oh that's cool. so my thing is just to kind of get everything to to feel like there's there's not a lot of pauses and there's not a lot of dead time Mm-hmm. And then you can go ahead and take a null position. It's just a ma- it's a matter of uh, it's for me it's a matter of just working on continuing to build on to make it feel like everything's moving. There's a little, there's a little movement. There's a little, it, it just feels natural. Like for instance, mm-hmm. right now, I don't really like how that, I don't like how that um, shadow is on the car. Yeah. So because it's in here I can take the shadow and, and you know, there's lots of different ways to do it. You can take it and just do a little transparency. You want it to be about, want it to be about right there.
So it, it just feels like it, it's not coming in right in the, well, let's go ahead and move it a little bit farther. So it's just, a, for me, it's just, how can I, how can I do li just little things throughout that, that make it feel a little bit more alive? There's, 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 there's some simple animation and then secondary animation, for instance, right here, Indiana, um, feels a little, it feels a little stagnant here. So another thing you can do is you can take the sign scale, and just add a little, little, let's see, let's go ahead and center. You can add just a little scale to it. Maybe a little bit more. I'm constantly looking where I can where I can add animation, where I can add something that will, again, make it feel like you're not just sitting. Mm -hmm. What I'd probably do here no uh oh there we go normally what i'd probably do is break all this stuff up let's see if i can do that real quick uh oops And let's see. Whew, maybe this isn't a good idea. Okay, let me see. Yeah, let's go ahead and not do that. That's gonna take a long time. <laughs> I mean, normally I would. Normally I would. I'd go through and I'd animate everything in here separately. I'd bring each and I'd stagger it a little bit. So even though it's not like one comes on, then the next one, then the next one, but I'd stagger it so it'd be like. I do hill, 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 maybe the trees pop on and then the houses pop up. But, and maybe that takes three seconds. And you're thinking, well, it's only three seconds. It's not that big of a deal. But in the grand scheme, in the grand scheme of, your, of your animation, it really adds a lot of, it really adds a lot to it when you're start, you start focusing on the little things. Mm-hmm. Let's just go ahead and do this then. I like to think that the little things aren't always for like, you know, the regular viewer. They're for people like us that really like enjoy like what we do and we're passionate about what we do because I know like sometimes I'll include little like Easter eggs in my projects and, you know, hopefully someone sees it or someone enjoys it as much as I made like, you know, making it or animating it. Yeah. I mean, and it's also, it's, um, why is that showing that there um people don't won't know why people won't know why they but it looks good and it feels natural but it's because of a lot of times all the little things you're adding in and now see i'm running into like what did i do here let me try a mask. what did i do here there we go there we go. It's not, and once you kind of get each individual piece feeling like, like, I like that. It feels natural. It feels now I work on, I got one more still, but now I work on, um, I work on timing. So how, how can things come on in progression where it doesn't feel like everything's coming on at the same time, but also there's not these giant pauses between everything. Mm-hmm. You go ahead and just do this one real quick. So how would you like how would you establish the time for this based off of like the script or the recording of audio you have or like a, do they give you a like set? How, how what do you mean? Like so time, like, like how long I'm going to make a video? So like let's say that you needed to animate this scene during a certain like phrase or something. I don't know. Like you know there's based talk on the VO. So I had the, I'll normally have the VO in here. I normally have the VO in After Effects, and so I'll animate. So I know right off the bat. Well, I cut that. I know if you look at scene, if you go back to this piece right here. Let's go ahead. So this would be. Let's just say this is scene one right here. Mm -hmm. Well, I would have that piece. 
uh, from here, that piece of audio. Okay. Yeah. What is edu- what is an education savings account? I would have that piece of audio right here. That way, or or another thing I do is have I'd have the whole voiceover and I'd I'd make markers. I'd put markers and then I would. So I may, I may make a marker like scene one and scene two and um, so it's just a matter of how what works best for you. But my timing is all like I said, everything comes down to your your uh, your script, your mm-hmm. script, your script timing, everything. It's all going to come down to that. You're just animating. You're creating some visual play for. Um, I'll just do this one real quick. So you go from boards to animation and there's like, is there ever animatics involved in this? Yeah. So I will do, I will do script, get that approved. Then I will do one board. I always do one board. Um, I'll get that, that board style. approved. What I use, I'll, I'll usually get them boards. I'll give them like three or four boards of completely different styles of animation. And then they'll pick the style they want. Then I'll do one or two. Oh, then I'll do one or two boards. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, then when they approve it, then I'll make all the boards. So it, it's a process because I never want to redo stuff or do more stuff than I need to. I always want to. I don't want to have to redo animation. So. Let's go ahead and bring this one in. So that feels like, okay, this one's going to, you know, kind of animate in. And then the next one's going to come in. What I would do, I start playing now with, how can I bring these together? Right? How can I make it to where? And that's the thing I'm trying to figure out now is how. Oh, where's my background gray? How can I make it feel like it's a fun transition? And so then what I'd probably end up doing here is I'm going to pull this back. So now I know, let's see if I like that. Let's go ahead and add a little easing to it. I'm telling you, motion with your easing, ease in and ease out. is huge. Oops, so I need to make this a little bit bigger. See, that's not working. So it's it, it's a puzzle. It's always going to be a puzzle. There we go. Well, it helps that all your layers are named because it's even more of a puzzle if you don't have your name layers. <laughs> yes, uh, or that's why when I when I when I start off the bat saying you got to have organization. If you don't have organization, you're pretty much hosed. You're, you're going to be, I mean, it's, if you're not organizing your project, you're in for a world of hurt because you're, you're going to be spending half your time trying to figure out where everything is as opposed to not really caring because you have it all laid out. You know, you have, you have everything laid out, you know where everything is. So now I'm just, I do the same thing here. I'm going to start animating, uh, let's see, picture. You know, I'm going to start animating the picture. I don't even need to break this one out. Normally, normally what I would do is I, whoopsie, I would animate each piece individually. Mm-hmm. But let's go ahead. Not going to do that. And then I, uh, let's see. normally I do it each piece individually. Because 
it just adds something to it. So if, like, if, so if the picture frame animates in and then the, the, then the cake builds up, it just adds layers. Mm -hmm. um, whereas it's just, you, you feel you go, you're going that extra mile, you're doing that extra thing. Whereas I don't really have time right now. Um, but that's what I would normally, normally do. So how long would you say like a minute and a half, like let's say a 90 second video would average take you? Uh, for the entire project? Uh, um, yeah, let's go with that. You could probably go, uh, if I'm really hustling, maybe a week. A week for 90 seconds. That's really good, in my opinion. <laughs> Because once I get into, once I get into, uh, once I get past the boards, yeah. Once you get past the boards, it's it's just the animation phase. So it's a matter of. It's a matter of just how, 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 how well do you know the tools? You know, how well do you know After Effects? How well can you get stuff done? Yeah, I definitely, I definitely feel like it, there's a, there's a really big, rough. a big learning curve at first. Then after that, it's, it's, I mean, you, you see what I'm doing? I'm doing the same thing over and over again. I mean, that's what I'm doing here. The, 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 I'm, I'm literally doing, and I'm not even going to, I won't break this up, but I'm doing the same thing over and over again, but it's how, you know, I'm trying to figure out it's not a, you know, it doesn't have to be like crazy complicated. Now, granted, when you get start getting into, when you start getting into uh, character rigging, again, you're going to rig a character in one scene. They're just going to run in place up and down, but you're then able to move them position wise. Um, there's just, it's a lot of this stuff, honestly, is a lot less complicated than you think. Mm -hmm. to be honest it's a lot it's not as complicated as people think it's just a ma matter of knowing what you want to do before you start doing it to some extent if that makes sense it's it's i kind of have an idea I, I the boards are the script is super important the boards are super important um because when you get into after effects and you're like i don't uh, i don't know what i'm doing i don't know what i'm making it can feel very overwhelming. Mm -hmm. um, but if you have that plan, that, that pre that, that prep, if you've done all that prior, it's, it's not as difficult as you might think. Computer. Yeah, I am definitely my last two years of school of, of college. I learned a lot about, the production side of animation so i think that like i uh, can't be stressed enough about planning like that's like and that's like last time we talked uh, i do i i was talking about wanting to get into like bigger projects and um that i'm i am going through like the planning phase you know so i'm definitely it's feeling... super i mean the the planning is super important i'm not even gonna do the gleam i mean i can show you how to do that it's not too difficult it's all done with lit, with masks to that, that right there. I would run it across just with a mask. If that makes sense here. Let's see if I can do it real quick. Um, let's see. Let's go ahead. This is actually a re really useful to a, learn. A really bad way to do it. Like I would normally break the computer screen out and use the computer screen because that's exactly what I want. Let me just do this real quick. So I can see what I'm working with. Then 
go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and parent that to the computer, the screen, because obviously I want it to move the same. The gleam I can get rid of. So now this is 100%. And I'm going to take another layer. I'm going to position it. Move it across it. And I'm going to take this and out from that. And then take the transparency. So it's a lot of heightened stuff and just kind of with, I use a ton of alpha mats and masks and just to, to To hide stuff. Mm -hmm. would, uh... Could you could you maybe explain like to anyone who doesn't know what an alpha mat is like maybe like what it does. So yeah, so let me uh, let me go new. All right, so go ahead and make a shape. Let's go ahead and make a circle. Okay, so and I'm gonna take on to make another circle. I'll make a square this time. Make it red. It doesn't really matter the color, but at least they stand out. So, the way it works is the layer on the bottom is going to reference the layer on the top. So, if you put the bottom layer in an alpha mat, what it's going to, you're telling it, you're saying, okay, the layer that is an alpha mat, wh wherever the top layer is, show the bottom layer. So when you can animate that top layer, you can animate that top layer and the bottom layer is only, you're only going to be able to see the bottom layer where the top, where they overlap. So wherever they overlap is where you're going to see it. Now, if you change, the opacity of the top layer because it's an alpha. So it's either it's going to, it's deciding the opacity. So if you're at 50%, it's going to, sh or 30%, it's only going to show, it's still going to make the layer behind it. Thirty percent opaque. But if you make the layer that that is the alpha mat, which is the one on top, hundred percent, you're going to see a hundred percent of the the circle layer and you can also do it inverted so now where it's going to cut it out so you take the layer that you want and you put it in an inverted so anywhere that that where the layer above it is you don't see the layer that, does that make sense Oh yeah, this is this is super useful. So anybody who's like this, I, like you're if, trying to you're trying to hide stuff. You're trying to make stuff appear. Um, alpha mats are really powerful, uh, and then luma mats are the same thing, but it is the luminance. So white. Is going to make it opaque. Black going to make it transparent. So if you had this, uh, let's go ahead and undo what I just did. So you can take this layer and you can, let's go ahead and actually, let's going to do this. Gradient ramp. There we go. So I'm going to, I'm going to put a gradient ramp on that layer. So now if you look at this layer, that's the layer. That's the shape I'm moving. That's the one I'm using for a mask, OK? Does that make sense? So it's basically, it's, it's this layer is looking at the gradient, saying wherever it's white is going to be 100% opaque, black is going to be transparent. And anything in between is just going to be that, the scale. It's going to be, it's going to go from opaque to transparent. So when you hide it again, So, so um, 
all these different mats are super powerful. Once you start using them, you can use them. In, there's so many different ways and so many different things you can do. That uh, that make them very powerful. Here, um, let's go ahead. So I want this as this comes in, computer to pop out, and then we can take this layer. Let's go ahead, and give it a mask. And let's just get a mask here. Wait a second. Wait a second. What did I messed up on? I don't know. We'll figure that out later. So uh, let's see. So the whole the whole point is I'm trying to get this to feel like it's a seamless, like it's pulling out and it's in your in the in the in this next scene. Another thing you can do is I can just cheat and get rid of that. Go back to scene one. So I need you. Scene two. Bring this back. So let's see what that did. So, and so you're slowly just building, you're slowly trying to build the story through your animation. Boy, this is hard to, just don't have a lot of room. Let's go ahead and hide this for now. So let's go ahead and let's see if we can get that to look better. Let's take the, let's take the, Another thing that's nice, let's see, did I use the computer? Let's get the gray. Let's get the, let's get these colors. I'm gonna just gonna, I'm gonna cheat. Go back to Illustrator. Go to my scene two. Save, let's see. And for some reason that didn't work. Wait a second. Scene one. That should change the color of my scene two. Save. Okay. There it is. All right. So you're able to change that stuff pretty quick. All right, let's go back here now. So if that scales in, then I don't need you. And I don't need this layer either. And so you just start building, you just start figuring out how you can build scene to scene. But the glee, the glimmer you want to have over top. So now you got to figure out how, how can I get that over top of it? So you may have to come here, here cut it out. And now you start playing with It's really just a game of how can you make this feel like, you know, this, this work for what you want. Mm -hmm. And so then from here, I would go on to my next scene. So, I'd, so whatever that looks like, maybe, 
maybe I'm going to have this position off. Oopsie. Scene one. Wait, what? Oh, that's why. So, um... Yeah, go ahead. When you're when you're doing these boards, um, are mm-hmm. you th- you're thinking about the transitions like way ahead of time, or do you like yeah. how you're working and yeah? So if you go back to here, yeah, I'm thinking about okay, how okay, I'm gonna come from go from here to here. What am I thinking? And my rough idea would be okay, I'm probably going to have these because you got these little arrows here, have these slide in, you know, so maybe they'll all slide in over the top. You know, I just start thinking about maybe maybe this circle here plays a part in this circle here. So how can I how can I put you know transform this circle into this circle, or how can I get the purple here to fill the screen here? Mm-hmm. How can I how can I turn this shape right here into this shape right here? And is that is that a is that this thing you know this layer shrinks down maybe the road turns into these two layers right here the hand comes in these these characters and all this content pops up so in my head i have a rough idea and it's never going to be exact because after effects is really just a a problem solving tool Mm -hmm. um but that's that's how i look at after effects it's a problem solving tool how am i going to animate you know how am i going to animate this whole thing in a way that tells the story keeps somebody visually engaged feels fun if it's supposed to be fun or is not you know it all comes down to what's the tone what's all that kind of stuff um but that's that to I me. Mean, that's my process. I, I I come up with the illustration um, from the script, and then from that, you know, the illustration I animate it all. So you can see it's not once you. I mean, and I didn't use that many tools here. But but you know, my goal is to make it make it feel like it's really custom because I have so many little elements all working together. Mm-hmm. But like I said, I, it's, I didn't use it. I didn't use it a single effect in After Effects. I didn't open up the effect panel one time, um, and yet I was able to animate this. Now you may get into start built, you know, putting you know putting textures on stuff. Again, you don't need the effects for that. Um, you may, you know, there are some effects, but I don't use a lot of these effects unless I'm doing compositing where you're compositing something into a scene or where you're, whether you're, um, you know, putting stuff together. I don't use a lot of these effects. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I usually, this is kind of the style of animation I've always done. Um, unless you, you know, if you're trying to do special effects where you're doing muzzle flare or you're doing, I don't know, uh, just different things with that art. You're kind of, instead of, instead of doing graphics, you're doing compositing. Mm -hmm. Um, you're going to probably use more of these effects, but I don't use a lot of effects just because the hard work for me is done in illustrator. I mean, this is where, for me, this is where everything's done. I do all my hard lifting in illustrator, um, because it allows me to, I can work more free in illustrator. You just able to there's so much more freedom and space to work in illustrator than in here i mean you can you yes it is true you can make all this same stuff in after effects with the shape tool and pen tool but it's much easier in illustrator oh yeah and being but... able to bring the stuff into illustrator very quickly turn it into an, a shape in after effects um and break it apart that's it's very it, that that tool right here this explode layers tool is very powerful it's simple it's super simple but it's super powerful when you're doing this type of stuff mm-hmm. the the pen tool in after effects is is a love-hate relationship for me so 
with just drawing stuff oh or... no 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 with the pen tool and after effects because it's it's kind of finicky for my I, I, the pen tool and illustrator is way better in my opinion and oh oh yeah 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 for sure um for sure so let me go ahead and i'm gonna i want this to kind of go off the screen so i'm gonna get the computer copy paste let's go ahead and put it over top And actually, I don't need that. Let's just go ahead and make. Oh, my headphones are dying. We'll see how long they last. Again, I'm going to utilize a mask. And let's go ahead and split this layer. Throw this here and show masks. There we go. Let's see. I screwed something up. Oh, wait. Yeah, I don't need you here. So now everything animates in, pulls back into the computer, flash goes by, and then I don't know, maybe, maybe as this goes off scene. You know, I'm thinking if I have another one, maybe my next one is coming on scene this way. And then I I push into the screen and I'm on to my next one. Mm -hmm. that, does that make sense? It's yeah. almost like I go here and then I'd scale this scene up and fill the scene. Establishing where everything's happening. guy it's driving me insane it's a short trip ah there's oh, a mess no. up yeah something happened <laughs> that is pretty normal that's pretty normal for me where you, you realize you changed one thing you're like all right i'm good and you're like wait a second no i'm not let's do scale Another thing that I use a lot of is um, our nulls. I don't know if you use a lot of nulls, but mm -hmm. nulls are super helpful. Like if I didn't want to scale that, I could use a null to scale it. Maybe it takes too long. Actually, yeah, I could make it so this is parented to this. This needs to be parented too. And then I'm on to my next scene. Let's see. And so you're always playing with the timing. I'm always kind of work, working with the timing, what feels natural, what feels good, what feels too slow. Um, oh, how'd I get back? So, um, I, I just have a question for myself, but um, I sure. imagine people in the chat are curious. So how did you get into animation? Yeah, so again, uh, my background is graphic design. So that's where um, being able to illustrate and do that stuff is is, is e not easy, but it's easier for me because that's where I got my original schooling. Um, uh, but uh, I had an opportunity after I graduated to move to Beijing. So I moved to, for a year. So I, I moved to Beijing for a year and uh, started. I worked at a uh, motion design, uh, like, a, like a TV studio. Um, and I got, I, 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 that's where I kind of, I was first introduced to um, to, to motion. And I was like, wait a second. I really like this. Um, this is fun. And so from there, like I said, I came back, I went back to school, I learned it, I went to full sale. And I'd already I had already gone through the graduation process. So for me, it was I, I really didn't 
care about my graduation anymore. Mm-hmm. I didn't care about the actual graduation. I was getting my, you know, I graduated. I just did, I skipped graduation and I started hitting the ground. I was like, okay, how, how can I get a job? Cause that's all I want to do. I want to animate. I want to do motion graphics. This is what I want to do. So I put my reel together. I put everything that I made. Um, I, instead of, you know, I tried to come up with original stuff, not to, not templated stuff. Uh, and just come up with original stuff, um, stuff that I made that was fun, that I made school, I was proud of, um, and cut together a really short reel and just started sending it out to random places. I knew I was going to move back to Iowa, and I figured Chicago was a big market. I, I lived in a, Quad Cities in Iowa. It's not huge. So I just went to post houses, advertising agencies, um, and I just, I, I grinded with, sending my con my my reel and my information out to as many places as i could and uh luckily i got a place that called that called back and said hey you know we'd love to interview you um you know we like what we've seen we like your work you know and so it, it, I, that's where i started i started as a just junior level graph uh, uh motion designer uh and all i really did was work on you know logo animations name plates little things here or there. I did a lot of compositing. I did a lot of rotoscoping. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, you know, it it was, you start, you start off at the bottom and you, you're basically doing your stuff you're doing. Isn't necessarily sexy for lack of a better word. It's not crazy awesome, but it's, it's, you're learning and you learn Mm -hmm. a lot of stuff learning, like (laughs) learning how to rotoscope. I would do entire commercials where we'd rotoscope the actors out because it's cut them out of a scene. Mm -hmm. I just got really good with the pen tool. And so all of a sudden now when I need to cut stuff out or when I need to use the pen tool, when I need to do stuff with the pen tool and After Effects, it's second nature to me because I learned doing rotoscoping um, or, or little little logo animations. You think, okay, I, they would ask for, I need this logo animated five different ways, right? Um, we want to present the client with five different logo animations. Mm-hmm. You're thinking, holy moly, there's like four, there's four parts to this logo. And so it makes you think outside the box. How can I animate this in a way that's fun, that's different than the other five? So they're not saying I'm just giving them the same five things. Mm -hmm. Um, So that helped me learn how to think outside the box even. Um, uh Uh-oh, can you hear me? Yeah, you went muted there for like one second. All right, I went to my computer now. My headphones died. Um. So, you know, and then from there, uh, I worked at that stu- that agency or that studio for a while, uh, for about a year, and then uh, started looking around for different, different, um, different jobs. Uh, I ended up in Indianapolis, and this is, this is where I started my company. I, um, what I did is I, I worked at an advertising agency here in town. And I realized there's just, they don't have a lot. There's not a lot of motion designers in town that the advertising agencies can use. So um, let me go ahead and I'll just start making other stuff. So I, um, so I, uh, I applied, I mean, I I worked at an advertising agency. And so I realized there's not a lot of places. Um, So I was like, wait, why don't I just work here for a while, learn how the industry works, and then start my own thing. That's what I did. And I started from scratch. I had nothing. Um, I just, I went out and I emailed every single advertising agency in town said, Hey, here's my work. I think it speaks for itself. Um, You know, I'd love to work with you. I'd love to partner with you. Let me know. Let me know if you want to work together. And it took a while. I mean, I, I don't even remember how many emails I sent out, but I started slowly to get work little by little. Um, and that's really what you have to do. It's, it's not, it's not just like a, out of nowhere, you're just going to get a job. I mean, you got to work at it. Mm-hmm. You got to work at finding a job. I mean, but at the end of the day, if you love doing motion graphics, you know, it's, it's, it's a great thing to get into. And there's a lot of opportunities in motion graphics in, in this area. It's just, you have to, 
you have to really, you know, you have to look and try to find it. And, um, but there are a lot of opportunities. So I just grind it and um, I just would contact people and try to find work. That's, I mean, that's more than anything. That's what I did. I, I, I wanted to find work. I wanted to, I wanted to do motion graphics and And you know it's mm -hmm. you're always gonna you're gonna get better. You you, you know you're. See how many layers this this guy has. Ooh. Just a few. A couple sixty-five. <laughs> oh man. Um. I mean, that's like that's great to hear. I know that. Um. That's kind of like what I'm going through right now is that in between phase and. I'd just... say one, one advice for anyone looking for a job, um, one piece of advice that really helped me, there is no such thing as a bad interview, as a wrong interview. You may find out, you may apply and find out before you even apply, uh, you go to interview. Yeah, it's not really where I want to work. Um, but interviewing is such an important part of getting a job. Um, you know, it's not just your work. They want to interview you. They want to get to know you. That's that's what we do at our company. When when I hire, I'm interviewing people because I want to get to know you. You know, I want to. I want to. We have a culture. We we work. We work. We have a lot of fun. But I want to get to know you, and that's part of the interview process. And um, the more interviews you have, the more the the, the easier it, you know the, the more natural and the easier it is. And so when when it comes time to where you're gonna interview for that position you really want you may have interviewed four or five times. doesn't mean you have to take the job. You could have interviewed for five jobs and then and after that interview process, you're like, ah, yeah, this job, this place, place isn't for, isn't really for me. That's totally fine. You got interview experience. Mm -hmm. um, and so when it comes time that you actually are sitting down at the interview, at the place you want, you've experienced that interview process. So you're not nervous. You're just, it's just natural. And, and they can get to know you as a person. They can get to know you. They can ask questions. Um, I didn't learn that till early, later on in my, in, in my career where I started to realize, you know, I, you know, the interview process is important mm -hmm. and, uh, just cause I mean, what's the worst thing that can happen? They offer you the job and you don't take it or they don't offer you the job, but that experience of, of getting to interviews is really important. Do you have any, do you have any bad interview stories you'd like to share with us? Uh, I mean, not really. Interviews are all going to be different. Some, you know, they're gonna, I, I've, you know, I've had where, you know, they, they, they ask that's those standard questions. Um, it's like in a scenario, if this happened, how would you respond? And you just honestly, to the end of the day, you just be yourself. At least when, when our company is interviewing, we, we want you to be yourself. We just want to get to know you. Um, we don't really do many canned questions. We just, we want to get to know you. We want to learn a little bit about you. We want you to learn a little bit about what we do. Um, we definitely at our company want to make sure that not only are you right for the job we're hiring for, but are we right for you? It's a two way street. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that you sit down day one and you're happy. Um, so we want to make sure we explain the job. We explain the, the responsibilities and it's also important to know when you're when you're getting into the field for the first time, you're going to start at the bottom. That's just the way it is. I did most, you know, everyone does. You start. You, I did all the rotoscoping. I didn't get to do any of the cool illustration animation stuff. It was I'm rotoscoping. So it's, you know, I'm following somebody with masks. Um, like I said, I'm doing little logo animations. But as you get better at things um, within the company, they're, they're going to give you more responsibility and through all those things, you're going to get better and you're going to hone your skills and you're going to continue to, um, get better and get more responsibility. And, um, but yeah, if you like motion graphics, it's an awesome field to get into. And it is such a cool field. Um, I love it. I mean, I love being able to do stuff like this and, and, you know, for a job. Oh yeah. It's, it's a lot, it's a lot of fun. And I'm, I think I think it's kind of at least for me. I I wanted to do something when I went to school that I didn't feel like I was necessarily working. You know, if you're doing something you like really enjoy and you love, it's not like you're really working. You know. 
yeah, I would, I would hands down, if you can find something you enjoy to do and you get paid to do it, I mean, it's awesome. And if it is motion graphics, great. If it's not motion graphics, it could be film. It could be, could be whatever, um, you know? So, uh, but yeah, we, at our company, we do a little motion graphics. We do a lot of video editing. Um, we do some animation, you know, we, uh, we just produce a lot of content. That's more than anything. We produce a ton of content. Would you say, would you say like for a new artist, would you say it's more quality over quantity or qu like quantity over quality sometimes? I would, I mean, for, you mean if you're looking for a job and sending your work out? Yeah. Let's, let's I would, I, my, my, for me, if I was looking to hire somebody and I had two people and one gave me four minute reel and you know, it was okay. It, it, it was a lot of, a lot of templated stuff or, you know, feel like I've seen it before because it's a lot of student work and it, but it's four minutes, but there's still some good stuff mixed in or, and then the other applicant gives me, you know, a, a 60 second or even a 30 second custom animation. Well, let's just say it's something like this. Maybe it's something like this. Maybe we're a motion design studio. And we, we do a lot of explainer videos and they were to give me something like this, that is 30 seconds. It shows me that you can tell a story, you can illustrate something. Um, so for me, it's it's definitely quantity or quality over quantity. Mm -hmm. Quality is really important. Uh, if you put together a really slick, you know, 30, 90, 60, 90, whatever it is, animation, uh, you know, that's gonna that's gonna do really well for for sending that out to potentially getting a job. Because it's just gonna show that you can like I said, you, you can come up with a concept. If you do it all, you can come up with the concept. Mm -hmm. You can, you can illustrate that concept in a way that is visually interesting. You can then take those illustrations. You can, uh, you can animate the whole thing to a voiceover. So it shows that you understand the process. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so yeah, for me, it's definitely quanti uh, quality over quantity, hands down. Oh, yeah, well, I'm trying to think. I mean, I can I can keep working if you if if you have any questions about how I do things or, um, you know, uh, it's uh, like you're... I said. There's certain tools that I use that I use more than anything, which like explode layers, motion, uh, for rigging. There's the uh, the puppet puppet. Uh, oh my gosh, I even told you earlier. Rubber hose. Yeah, rubber hose. That's another great one. That's a, that's a rigging tool, but you can use it for so many other things. Um, so yeah, it's a lot of tools out there to utilize. I use there's a, a place called uh, Battle Axe. Uh, like for instance, bat, this is free. It's called Butt Capper. So I mean, it's just these little things that you can time save. Uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and make a line. one click you can now make them there's i mean you can do that you can do that in the by by drilling down into the you know it's like okay keep it's like five clicks to get right to, to as get opposed to the... just a quick and easy or even you know it's like let's see so it's like come on You know, you can do that. There's just, it's like little tools where, you know, you can, you can just change, change very quickly how, how you work. And it's, it's about speed. It's uh, when it, when it comes down, you know, time is, time is money. Mm -hmm. So any little tricks that you can learn to really speed up your process. Um, so like I, I, I can't press it like this tool to me has saved my life motion too. if there's no other tool you ever get in after effects. And if you have 30 or 40 bucks, whatever it is, I don't even know what it is anymore. You have 40 extra dollars to spend and you like motion graphics. There's no better way to spend 40 bucks or 30 bucks, whatever it is, than motion mm -hmm. just because you can very easily, let's do that. You can very easily change so 
So this is linear, pretty boring. But you guys know easing. I'm sure you know easing. You know, you can right click, ease in or ease out. Mm -hmm. But you can very easily, depending on how much you want, so it slows down. And it's a, it's a slider, so you can decide how much how much easing you want. Can you set keyframes on in there, or do you have to do that separately? And then if you want it to ease, easy ease, which means slow down. And then, I mean, obviously you can use the graph. I don't use a lot of the graph. I mean, you can. Mm -hmm. You really want to get into it, I, I will use the graph editor. But it just allows you to very easily. No, this is interesting. I, I definitely will look into this because I, I'm, I know the graph editor, but this seems like a more straightforward and easier way. Yeah. I mean, if you like position, if you want to, you want to use the graph editor, you can, uh, whew, it's been a while. Where is it? Separate the dimensions. There we go. So you can start now editing the graph more. You can do it over here. I mean, there's just, it's just a matter, you know, figuring out what type of animation you want, the speed of it. And this tool makes, makes, I mean, it's not, it, it helps so much just it being able to to change animation very quickly mm -hmm. as opposed to your standard linear animation. I mean, linear animation is good, um, but for the most, most part, movement, natural movement doesn't have, isn't linear. Now, if I move my arm across the table and I set it down, usually I'm, I'm, not, I'm not moving the same speed the entire time. You know, I'm not a robot. Mm -hmm. And so there is a natural speed up, slow down. There is a natural ease to it. And it just feels mm -hmm. more natural. Mm -hmm. um, again, I'm self-taught mostly in After Effects. Uh, I learned a little bit in school, but um, I'm mostly self-taught. You know, you, you learn a little bit in school, but I'm mostly self-taught. So, Yeah, I... I honestly don't think I had a class that covered After Effects, to my knowledge. Maybe a little bit, like, touched on it, but nothing, nothing, nothing that I really wanted to learn. So I had to, like, learn it all myself. So I think, like, I think that's a big thing. I'm really happy that IPUI is picking up the motion graphics track. Yeah, I, it's huge. It's huge. I think that's such an important, uh, a great thing that they're doing. Um, you guys use a lot of parenting and all that kind of stuff. Um, I, I don't, I'm not sure exactly what they're covering and stuff like that. Do you I, use a lot of parenting? Um, so what I normally do is I try to establish like the first, you know, like the first thing I'm doing and then, um, uh, I'll, I'll parent it. Um, but inside of that parented layer, like, let's say I'm like a good example is I did, uh, like a lighter flicking open. And so I, I parented the cap of the lighter to like. It, it the motion of it opening and then i went into the other separate layer and added in like you know some of the like wiggling you'd have if you actually did that you know like some of the principle you know like the principles animation like the follow through <laughs> and stuff like that so that i i that's normally how i do it is like i'll base it off the main motion then edit it later i don't know if that's how everyone does it but that's how that's my kind of process is yeah parenting is pretty powerful i mean it's I do it, but I also do a lot of, a lot of, I mean, you can, so you can, this is a long way you can rig characters. This is a long way to do it. Um, but again, like I said, rubber hose will do all this for you. Um, but I use parenting for all sorts of stuff when I want to scale through th two things together. You know, when I'm, when I'm trying to, when I want one scene to match another scene, I'll parent them together. But, um, like I said, I don't, I don't do a lot of crazy stuff, you mm -hmm. know, 
I, I'll use a lot of nulls. Like for instance, if I want this to just scale up or scale back and I'll create a null. All a null is doing is, it, is you're telling this layer, hey, by the way, regardless of what the animation you're doing, whatever this null is doing, it, it's gonna affect you too. Mm -hmm. So now, see how it's got a slight, see how it's got a slight, it scales down. Mm -hmm. Wait, did you already parent it? Oh no, you parented it. Okay, I see, I see what you did now. Yeah. I parented this to the null because I figure it might be nice. And that's another thing you do. Once you feel like the, that's too much. Once you feel like the animation is good, then you can start going back in and start adding these little things that just add a whole nother layer to it. The secondary animations where, because before now you've got this, it's, it's, it's scaling while everything's moving. And then all of a sudden it's pulling back, scaling down, and then it speeds up and goes right into the, the computer screen. Mm -hmm. And then you can also, if you want, you can have the computer screen. See, it already has a scale on it, right? So you can't scale it again, but if you just create another null, parent it to the null, scale the null up like, I don't know, 110. Now it's pulling back. That's scaling it. So it just, it, it's, you start to, you're starting mm -hmm. to add little intricate animations that really start to make it feel like it's that it's premium. You know, there's, there's, if I took all that stuff out, it'd still be all right. It'd still be nice, but you'd know there's just, see, now that doesn't fit anymore, but you know, I get to go back through and start fixing everything. But so that's, that's my process. It's, 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 um, it's the script. Then I go to the illustrations. Then I bring it all into, I break it apart and bring it all into After Effects and, and, uh, and animate everything. So, I mean, that's, that's <laughs> not, not too difficult. It's not too crazy. Um, to me, the illustration and the, and the script are the two most important pieces, the script obviously. And then you go to the illustration part. Cause that's, that's what's going to drive your animations. And then from there, you, 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 uh, After Effects is the tool that you, the problem solving tool where you figure out how to, how to make it all come together and come to life. Um, but like you said before, I never answered on the anim animatic question. So my full process is script, then I make all the boards, got the VO, then I take all my boards and I'll rent, I'll, I'll export out all these boards as like JPEGs or what, you know, as an image, bring mm -hmm. them into After Effects and just, or Premiere, whatever, in an editing software. And then I'll lay in the VO with each still and then send that to my client before I animate. So they can, they can look at it like they're listening. What is educate? What is an education savings account? And they look at this and then it, it cuts to this and then cuts to this. So there's no animation there, but they're very, they can, they can easily see what, the, the frame is going to mm -hmm. look like and they can marry it, marry it up to the, the voiceover. So, yeah, that's, um, I was, cause I, I know that like, especially with anything that's a voiceover, the pacing is super important Yes, because if stuff's happening, that's not relevant. Like what's kind of the point, you know? Um, yeah. And also you don't want to put too much on screen. Like for instance, I've got, you know what? Six words here. You don't want to put too much on screen when you are, you know, when you've got two words, mm -hmm. you know, so how can you pace that in a way where you still can kind of digest this? Um, see, I can find this video if you want to see it. Yeah, we, we like to see it. Uh, let's see. Let's see if I can find it. I think it's on here. Hope it scales up. There it is. Can I scale it up? Yeah, I can. What is an education savings account? An education savings account, or ESA, is a government authorized savings account loaded with a portion of money the state has allocated for education. 
that a parent uses in the form of a debit card on schools, services, or a combination of both. Where does the money come from to pay for ESAs? People and communities pay income taxes, sales taxes, or both. Those funds become the revenue the state uses to pay for education. Now, how do ESAs work? A parent receives a debit card that is already loaded with her child's allotted funds. She starts using the card for educational services approved by the state government. She can also roll over unused funds to pay for future expenses, including college. And that's it. She can continue to customize her child's education. Today, thousands of parents in states across America are using ESAs to access learning services that work best for their children. Learn more about those families and the effects ESAs are having on communities at edchoice.org. So that was that one. Um, they change a little bit. I, I'm sure it's not exactly, the boards aren't exactly, they're darn close, but it, I mean, it, the pacing and everything changes a little bit as you're making it. I did. I don't I, even know if that worked on the stream. I don't even know if you saw that or not. Um... I think so because it's like it's just capturing your screen. I'm pretty sure they got it. Um, but I was gonna ask you the debit card of rotating. Was that yeah, done? That's 3D. I was gonna say that. I was like that. I was like I. I thought that was 3D. Just like just by looking at it, but it was really cool. So I, was, I always, I've always, I I'm really interested in finding out how to add depth to my work in After Effects. And like, do you have any tips for anyone wanting to add like some depth to their work in general? Maybe. Uh, one thing I would say is don't over don't overuse drop shadows. That I mean, overusing it is is um, is a killer to me. It's like people overuse it. I would say more than anything, depth of field. You can you could if you really want stuff to feel, you know, you could potentially start you know throwing stuff in the background and softening it. So you get that you get that depth of field you get with the camera. I know a lot of a lot of people will play with that a little bit, um, but also when I want to put 3D in, I use Cinema 4D. Mm -hmm. um, so when I want to add that depth feel or to you know kind of get away from the the flat feel, I'll add. If you just you'd be surprised if you add one or two little 3D elements it adds a whole nother layer to your video and you don't have to add that much stuff. You don't have to add a 3d scene and you, but if you add a little 3d element here, a little 3d element there, uh, it, it really, it really does a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, like outside of that, I mean, you can, you can throw a little drop shadow on. It just depends on the style of illustration too. Like the mm -hmm. way I built these, I built it all to be really flat. Um, but you can, I mean, you can use drop shadows. You can use harsh, hard shadows. You can, um, just depends on what you want to do. Mm -hmm. But I didn't do a lot of really heavy 3D when I was, that's just not what people want. You're also going to, you're also going to run into as you start doing work. There's just a style that is going to be really popular. And that's what kind of people are going to want. So you got to, you got to learn, you got to, it helps to know what's popular at the time. And then if you don't know how to do it on your free time, figure out how to do it. Cause you may have clients or people, or even the business you work at ask, Hey, we, we've got a client that is asking for this. Mm -hmm. So it's good to continue, continually know what's popular. What's what style is people are asking for all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I, um, I, uh, speaking to that, I actually had a, uh, somebody, looking for a youtube intro i and i don't know if you remember that video i sent you a little while back of the ramen bowl with the glitch mm -hmm. effect in the smoke um they they really like that effect so they wanted something that was similar to that so cool i think that's that's kind of that's another thing you'll you'll do stuff for fun and people will see it and you know they may say hey i like what you did here um can you make something similar to that you know for for our something that we want and don't you know never always put yourself out there. The worst thing that, that, that can happen is you don't hear back or they mm -hmm. say, no, thanks. That's the worst thing that can happen. And that's really not bad. Um, the best thing is you, you get a gig, you get a job, you know? Um, so don't feel bad about, you know, always continue to put yourself out there, put, put your stuff out there. Um, super important because that's how, it's how you're going to get 
in, uh, you know, noticed enough to get an interview is, is apply. You know, you mm -hmm. can't apply too much. Um, so. All right. Well, I'm s sorry. I'm, I, um, I was going to, I was planning on going a little longer today, but I have, I have to go to work in here in a little bit. So, um, if you have like, uh, any, like, I think this is like a good stopping point. Um, unless you wanted to do a little bit more work, um, and show us a couple more things if you were interested in that. I mean, if I, I would say, I mean, this, this is good here. I think mm -hmm. I'd be happy to, if you have anyone interested in character rigging, I'd be happy to do something short, shorter down the road. Of course. Yeah. So I could have a character rigged and I could show how to, how I do it. You know, I could, I could explain how I rig using, you know, rubber hose, or I'm happy to do that. But mm -hmm. that takes a while to set up. Yeah. Um, but if people are interested in learning rubber hose, or I mean, there's so many tutorials on it as well. Mm -hmm. You could just type in rubber hose into YouTube, and you're going to get a, a million tutorials on how to use it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, what I did from going from, you know, building this scene, animating it, and then go, you know, transitioning to this scene, and then transitioning to the stadium. That, I mean, that if you look at like all these different videos I did, mm -hmm. they're all, I don't know why that's playing. They're all that style. It's just a matter of the design. I mean, really at the end of the day, they all do something very similar. Um, but it comes down to the illustration. For mm -hmm. me, that was the big part, you know, it was the illustration. Um, you know, what how can I illustrate a, what my client is asking for, or how can I marry up visuals with the script that they gave me? Mm -hmm. So if, if you're not comfortable, if you want to do this type of work and you're not comfortable on illustrator, I would say just open up illustrator and get comfortable with it enough to where you're not scared to open it up and, and mess with stuff. Um, you know, because it's it's a it's those illustrator and after effects together are such powerful tools and they work so well together mm -hmm. um and i wouldn't focus on all the effects in after effects either because you, i mean like i said before i didn't use anything there i used i didn't use a single effect and in all those videos that are on my site that i did a long time ago i almost i, I barely used any effects there's one video i made there that i did i use a lot of effects it was a different style of video um but for the most part, I didn't. I don't, I don't use many effects because I think you can you can create really nice, slick, professional-looking explainer-style videos without getting crazy into effects. Um, simple, a lot of times, is going to be better um, if it's done well. Mm -hmm. So if you can make something simple but make it really clean. Um, I think you're going to get, you know, it's going to come, it's going to come off a lot better. I mean, cause like I said, I mean, this, it's not much to this, right? I mean, you saw me do it. Oh yeah. I mean, well, I think that's, I think that's the, the kind of cool thing about really good animation is that even if it is super simple, just the fact that it looks so good, you know, is what blows people away because they're like, wow, that looks really good. I bet it was really difficult to make, but like in reality, you know, if you're experienced, you know what you're doing, it's not like as no. difficult as you might think. You know, the animation type, where, whether you're, you're easing or easing in or easing out is super important. That's going to make it feel that much cleaner. Um, but yeah, like I made this in, you know, a, a very short amount of time. Um, and if you had, and this was two boards. So, you know, this is what? 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, about 17. I did I, probably between, usually between 20 and 30 boards. Um, you know, so it's, you know, it's illustrating and then animating for three or four or five days. And there you go. You got a finished product. You know, if, if this is what you like to do, I would definitely, I would advise find something like a cool half page poem or song or lyrics or whatever that you think could be a good explainer video and, and try that process, try it out, see if you can do it, whether, you know, it's illustrating the sections, you know, and then animating it all together, you can animate it to the song. So you already have the song, mm -hmm. um, that, which may be a good starting point. 
So it takes the script out of it. It takes the, the music out of it. You have all that stuff and you're just going back and you're illustrating it and animating it. So. All right. Well, um, do you have any closing words for our audience uh, before we head out here? I mean, if you like anime, if you like motion graphics, it's it's an awesome field. It's a great field, and there are a lot of job opportunities in, in this. Even in this area, there's a lot of job opportunities in this area. Um, so I would, if the, if this is something you like to do, I would definitely pursue it. And really, if you don't have a lot of time in class do it on your, on your own time, you know, do it on your own time, get comfortable, make, make one or two cool videos and use those, use, use that video or those few videos you have to get a job. Cause that's, what's going to get you a job. So that's it. All right. Well, thank you so much for yep. hanging out with us today. And, um, hopefully we can do another video, uh, another session with you soon. I know, I don't know if Miranda heard that or not. I'll talk with her later about it and hopefully we can, get another session going we can do some maybe some rigging which would be a lot of fun or animating an already rigged character so or if uh, anybody has like how to you know i try my best if someone has a video and they say hey how do you think they did this i'm happy to try to recreate something at least oh. make it in a way how i would make it because there's 50 different ways to do everything in after effects i swear there's you know you'll meet tons of people and like i do it this way well i do it that way and they look very similar, but mm -hmm. they make it very differently. So uh, if you have something that like, how do you think this person did this? I'm happy to try to figure it out. So oh, that sounds awesome. Well, I'll talk to Miranda about that again. Thank you so much, everybody. We're going to be signing off here and have a great rest of your weekend. Um, again, this is Brandon Stahl and we appreciate you hanging out with us today. Sure. No problem.